You've probably noticed a big influx in pop punk and pop punk inspired music seeping into the mainstream over the past couple years. We've seen artists like Machine Gun Kelly, Demi Lovato, and Avril Lavigne all release full pop punk albums. And then we've also seen a lot of the influence seep into mainstream pop and hip hop. And to be honest, I'm not really mad at it. I grew up loving this genre and it feels super nostalgic to me, but it has to be done well for me to still enjoy it and appreciate it. And so to no surprise, when my favorite artist ever, Black Bear, released a pop punk album last week called In Loving Memory, I fell in love with it immediately. I've listened to it probably several dozen times since it came out, and I just knew that we would have to do a tutorial on it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to take a look at how to make a song in the style of his new album, In Loving Memory, specifically some of the more upbeat 2000s inspired pop punk songs. And we're going to look at things like laying down clean guitars, distorted guitars, programming drums and processing them to sound huge, vocal production techniques, writing techniques. And by the end of this video, you should have a pretty good idea of some of the things that you could do in your productions to lean you into that 2000s pop punk sound without it sounding super cliche and corny and kitschy. So massive shout out to Black Bear and the entire team on this album. This one came out crazy and I'm excited to dive into this for the tutorial. But before we do that, my name is Austin. You're watching Make Pop Music where we have weekly videos. If you like this video, please make sure you like, comment and subscribe. It helps us out a ton. And at the end of the video, if you want to support the channel, you can head over to makepopmusic.com and check out all the stuff we have over there. We have preset packs, courses, sample packs, uh, blog posts. We have a podcast now. So definitely head over there and check all that out when this video is over. But let's dive into Cubase so I can show you how to make a Black Bear style song in the style of his new album in loving memory. Let's check it. We're in a Cubase session. We're gonna be working at a tempo of 155 and I think I'm gonna write this in B minor. The first thing that I wanna do for any kind of pop punk style song, honestly, is come up with a really solid guitar riff. And so I'm gonna grab a guitar right now. We're probably gonna start with a clean riff. So I'm gonna go for the Fender Strat. So I've got a Fender American Strat right here. Let me unmute this so you can hear it. We'll probably do something like this, pretty plucky. And I'll go ahead and get that tracked and edited and pulled in so we can hear it. All right, here we are. Here is that riff that I just played out. It's pretty much what I was showing you that I was gonna do. Processing it, we're going pretty simple. It's just a Seldano amp. Uh, we're just using an overdrive, a compressor, and a chorus. And then here are the amp settings. Nothing too, too crazy at all going on in this and some reverb and some delay. And I've double tracked it and panned it left and right. Here's what we have. And now what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and lay over some drums so I can find the main rhythm and then we'll track rhythm guitars after this. For the drums on this style record, what I would use is probably Superior Drummer 3. In the Machine Gun Kelly video that we did a couple months ago, we used our Sour Candy Kit from our website. And I already showed you how to process that one and use that one, so I figured I'll do something different. And we have the Pop Punk Easy X expansion pack for Superior, and I'm just on the Pop Punk Kit. I don't think I've made any real tweaks or changes to anything. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what this sounds like with no processing. So it's pretty similar to that big, woody, punchy kind of Travis Barker kit, which is what we're going for on this. So I'm gonna lay down a pattern and then I'm gonna stem this out into kick, snare, toms, and cymbals so I can mix them a little bit further. All right, here is the drum pattern that I have come up with and everything's stemmed out now. So I have a kick, a snare, a cymbal, and a toms. And here's what it sounds like. Let me go ahead and show you some of this processing. There's not too much happening on this, on the kick right now. Uh, there's nothing happening inside of Easy Drum or anything like that. All I'm doing for this is just a little bit of EQ. I find that scooping some of these low mids in like the 200 to 400, 500 region can kind of open up room for your bass and your guitar. And then I added a little bit of punch at 70 and a little bit of click at like 2200 with a shelf above that. And uh, here's what the kick sounds like with and without that. Just feels a little bit beefier and punchier. And then same with snare. I have added quite a bit to this. Let's go ahead and show you what this sounds like straight up. Not bad, but needs to be a lot thicker for this kind of album. So we're gonna use the uh, Pawn Shop Compressor by Corn F Audio with the snare smash setting. And then we're gonna use just some fresh air to brighten this up. I'm going pretty aggressive. I found the drums in this record very, very, very bright. So we're gonna go with that and then some pro Q to kind of cut off some of those like really, really lows that we don't need. Boost a bit of that 200 so you get that nice thump, and then we're cutting off some uh, kind of like room resonances here. 
Nothing too, too crazy. A gate is going to be a huge, huge benefit when you're compressing a snare this hard because you don't want that snare to be super long. So we are gating it out. It just sounds like this. And that's going to make it a lot more punchy in the mix and then a little bit of mag EQ for a little bit more sizzle and sparkle and then the last little bit of EQ here. So that's pretty much all we're doing on the toms. We're just using the pawn shop compressor with a drum bus setting and then we're using knock and this is what's saturating it and clipping it and giving those toms a bit of punch. And then for cymbals, we're just brightening them up and taming some of those kind of mid frequencies that are annoying. And that's pretty much it. And now we need something like a rhythm guitar. So I'm gonna grab a Les Paul because I'm gonna want some like chunky distorted tones. And for that, I just find like single coil pickups to be a little bit metallic and thin. So we're gonna grab a Les Paul on the bridge setting and let that rip. All right, I've tracked the rhythm guitar. As you can see, the waveforms look completely different. It's not nearly as transient as with something like that Strat that we used for the main. Uh, but this is gonna give you that big wall of sound that you want. And I found that when you're doing these kind of pop punk style records, unless you want them a little bit looser, cutting off some of the like fret noise and buzz and extra tail that you don't want, will tighten them up quite a bit. So let's take a look at these tones. We're still using the Soldano, pretty great amp for anything kind of pop punk related. And we're using the Overdrive One with this kind of setting, kind of doing like what a, a, like a tube screamer would do. And then we're using just the amp right here, Overdrive at like two, bass at six, seven, mids at four, treble at seven and a half, eight. There you go. You can copy all that if you want. Not really doing much with the EQ. Here are the cab settings. And then I'm not using, oh, I'm using a little bit of reverb on this actually. Um, so it's just a little bit to kind of poke it in a room. And then we've got a little bit of Pro Q. We're boosting some of the sizzle. We're taking away some of these like ugly high mid frequencies and then just doing some band passing. Same thing on the left. But to me, no matter what you do with amp sims, they still sound a little bit digital. And we covered this on our Instagram. We posted a little reel this week about this. But let me show you what I do to kind of make guitars sit in a mix a little bit better and feel more realistic. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this amplified instrument processor from Corneff Audio to my guitar bus. And this is gonna work on everything. And what we're doing is we're doing some EQ moves up here. So we're taking out a little bit of like 376. We are taking out literally just a hair of 490, just a hair of 1.2 and just a hair of like eight, eight point two. Um, and then we have this Corn F audio proprietary signal processing engaged right here. We're adding a little bit of stereo width and it's not messing up the mono compatibility I've already checked. And then this is really what we need right here, this insufferable mid range filter. So let me go ahead and bypass this so you can hear what the guitar sounds like. Versus Feels a lot more like a real guitar now. We're getting rid of a lot of that like 2K, 4K disgusting like buzzy buzziness up here with that mid-range filter. And then with the signal processing and the stereo width, we're just making everything feel a little bit more kind of mid forward, but it doesn't feel clunky and thick and heavy. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and lay down a bass guitar so we can really fill this out. It's really hard to dial in guitar tones without bass. So let's go ahead and get that in. For the bass on this, I'm just using punk bass. This is by Submission Audio. I used it in the How to Make a Machine Gun Kelly style song as well. This doesn't really need much at all. It sounds great straight out of the box. I'm just adding a little bit of our bass for some sub content because you don't really get that in live track bass a ton. And then we're scooping out quite a bit of the low mids here because we don't really need it in the mix. We will have uh, drums and guitar sitting there. And let me show you now with that bass in so you can hear that processing with the, the AIP that we had. I mean, that's a massive difference to me on like getting that to sound decently realistic. I feel like this still needs some kind of like top melody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take, I'm going to try the Strat and I'm going to try the Les Paul, but I'm going to do some like octave little riffs above top and then I'll check in and show you what we get. All right, this is a very, very kind of quintessential pop punk thing that you can do. I've added these little kind of like octave riffs up here. I'm using guitar rig for these just so they sit in a kind of different area than that main guitar that we've got. I don't want it to kind of overlap that too much. And so we've got this setting in guitar rig and I'm going kind of wet with these. <laughs> and 
And then I'm also kind of doing the same thing, but this is just kind of continuing with eighth notes all the way through. And that's almost gonna act as like a pad behind everything. So it works really, really well in the mix. Check this out. And to me, that feels pretty solid for what we're gonna have is probably a chorus. Let's start working on the verse because I wanna kind of transition this into doing more hip hop style stuff. We hear that several times in the Black Bear album. We also heard it in the MGK album and we didn't do it in that tutorial. So let's do it now. I'm gonna just bring in some kind of trap kicks and snares and we'll play around. I got some drums actually laid out for this verse. All we're really doing for this is just like your traditional kind of trap kick. Nothing crazy going on there. We're actually taking out a little bit of the subs because uh, if you're going to have real drums, they're not nearly as like sub heavy as hip hop drums. And I don't want the chorus to feel small when it comes in. So we're going to sacrifice a little bit of the low end from like this and the 808 that we're going to do in a second. For the snare, this is kind of an important part of this. I found that a lot of the time in these songs that Travis Barker is drumming on, even when there are kind of hip hop sections, there's a big mix of real snare, electronic claps, and electronic snares. And so what we've done here is we just have the sunny digital clap right here. We have this Travis Barker one shot, and we have this Murder Beats uh, just traditional trap snare. We're processing all of those with a little bit of RC20 just to give us some room and filter out some of the highs and lows. And it kind of gives us this really unique snare tone that you start to kind of hear in these kind of Travis Barker pop punk records. And then we've got a trap hat, And what I also wanted to do was I dragged over that first riff that we laid down since that ended up being such a background player of that chorus. I wanted it to still have a moment to shine. So what we're doing is we have it right here and I'm just adding spaced out via baby audio. So this is a really, really cool delay reverb kind of modulation combo plugin right here. And it, it tucks that guitar into such a cool little space. For the verse, I want it to be kind of dreamy and washy. I don't need something super transient and pluck heavy. Now, of course, we have to bring in an 808. Here's the 808 that I've chosen. It's just Mr. Clean out of our Poptopia preset bank for Serum. It's not doing anything crazy. It's just kind of a nice clean 808 that I added a little bit of Quadrafuzz on and a little bit of Kickstart on. Quadrafuzz is giving it some saturation and Kickstart is just side chaining it to that kick. And what we should do for the second half to kind of make it feel a little bit different right here is I think we should start to layer in some kind of like real drum or real drum loop and some kind of palm muted guitars just to kind of lean it into pop punk a little bit more as it continues. Let's take a look at this. This makes a pretty massive difference in this verse. This is a Travis Barker loop that I found off of Splice. Here's what it sounds like straight up. It's kind of got that like crushed room sound that he's really been doing since the Blink-182 self-titled album when he kind of did this sound on Feeling It. And I found that they used it quite a bit in the Black Bear record as well. But I want to trash it up even more, so we're going to throw RC20 on it. We're going to distort it a shit ton. We're going to filter it out a little bit, and here's what it sounds like. And then we're adding a little bit of Verb Suite that is really short, but pretty wet. So it's kind of spacing everything out and making it sound like this, like, almost like a room mic that just got absolutely obliterated with compression and saturation. And it sits in really, really, really nice with those kind of hip hop inspired drums. Now it's feeling like a Travis Barker and Black Bear record. And I think we're gonna go even farther by throwing in some palm muted guitars. These were on the Les Paul.
I actually went a bit more saturated and distorted than they went on their album. A lot of the time they're doing clean palm mutes for this, but I just found that this was sitting out of the mix a little bit better. I tried a clean palm mute and it wasn't really doing what I wanted, but here's what this verse sounds like now. And I think that'll probably do it for this. We don't need anything too, too crazy. What we should start doing is building up some kind of pre-chorus. So we're probably going to go into like a big tom fill, into like a big snare roll. That should do a pre-chorus, and then we'll figure out what the guitar and bass is going to do. Here's the drums that I figured we should try for the pre-chorus. We've kind of got this like big tom kind of snare build up right here into this big snare roll into this pretty gnarly fill. So here's what it sounds like. Couldn't be more Travis barker if we tried. I feel like that's going to work pretty, pretty perfectly. For the guitar, I kind of want to keep this going with some palm muted guitars, but I think I'm going to change the chord progression here. And this is the part where I feel like we should have some kind of really pretty kind of clean guitar that we haven't really had so far. Here's a guitar. We have the palm mutes just kind of doing those like just consistent eighth notes. <laughs> And we're kind of building tension for this pre-chorus, so we've got kind of a rising progression that is not the same as the verses. And then this is probably my favorite thing that we've added so far. This is like this really pretty clean guitar. Using hard left and right out of guitar rig, and then just some RC20, nothing too, too crazy. And then I have this kind of counteracting melody that's gonna play on the right. And then we've just got some like little twangy hits. Played with the drums. Now let's lay in some bass. I don't want anything nearly as big as that 808 or even that punk bass, but I think we're gonna use the punk bass as kind of a basis and then saturate it and distort it on top of that. Here is the punk bass that we're using for the pre-chorus. This is a nice little tip too, if you're looking for having a bass under something that's not super big and super low end heavy, but you still want that kind of texture there. What we're doing is we have our bass still on it just from the last preset, but we don't really have to use that. We're filtering out everything a lot with RC20 and we're doing quite a bit here. Versus if we had it on the main channel, It's a lot more mid heavy and it sits in really, really nicely with those guitars that we've added. And then I'm probably gonna add some big like guitar hits there, like a wecka wecka, and then we'll go into the hook. So I'll drag everything in now and let's see what we have. The only thing we added were these little hits. You've heard me do them. Nothing crazy. And then we have copied and pasted what we had for the intro as the chorus. Uh, that's all exactly the same. The only other things that we've done is we made the second half halftime. So all I did was I moved that snare from being on the two and the four to being on the three. So you can hear it right here. That's just going into... And then we've added a couple little like risers and hits. So I just wanted the chorus to hit a little bit harder. So we have these. And I just have a transition for that pre-chorus. But that's literally it. And that is pretty much the entire instrumental. I want to lay in some vocals so I can show you what that's going to be. And then we'll do a preview at the very, very end. All right, we've got vocals dragged in. So let me show you what I'm doing for this. We'll go over the lead vocal for the verse first. There is not much happening on the processing. It's literally just EQ, compression, auto-tune, DS, a little bit of EQ, sending it to the usual suspects. Here's what it sounds like. I wanted to write something that was in a very, very traditional Black Bear melody. So yes, I know this sounds exactly like several of his songs. That's kind of the point of these tutorials is to see how similar I can get it. So here's what we have. I'm tripping over words. I keep trying to sneak past you. Yeah, yeah. 
It's always getting worse to get to me like a tattoo Yeah, yeah I'm sick of every day, it's like I live in fucking misery I'm sick of all the pain, it never ends, it's fucking killing me I drink another fifth and then pass out every last year Take another hit, I wanna drown at my passion so a couple things that I can show you that are super kind of traditional Black Bear is his vocals are normally pretty dry and then he'll just do these washy reverbs. But other than that, he keeps a pretty dry vocal. And then we have this low vocal come in here. We've probably done this three dozen times on the channel before, but I'll show it once more. What we're doing is we duplicated that main vocal, took auto-tune, dragged it down an entire octave, and then added doubler to spread it out. And we get this. I'm sick of every day, it's like I live in fucking misery I'm sick of all the pain, it never ends, it's fucking killing me And then the last little very Black Bear-esque thing that we're gonna do right here is let me open up this automation We are automating this throat length right here, also called Formant You can see it right here in Autotune, watch as this is saying It's just kind of moving a little bit Drink another fifth and then pass out, I relapse, yeah Take another hit, I wanna drown, I'm not pass, yeah does it all the time, kind of the pioneer of that sound. It gets used by everybody now, but I feel like I had to throw it in just to show it. And then for the pre-chorus, we're down to one vocal. We're just doing this like really telephonic vocal. Too many empty promises. I left you hanging by a thread. Just a lot of quadrifuzz for distortion, some repeater for like some slapback delay. We covered this in a creative vocal processing tutorial a couple weeks ago, so go check that one out if you want to see that in more detail. And then just these big delay throws. And then that is pretty much it. For the chorus, this is the only part where we have some stacks and vocal production. I found that in his album, his vocals were deceivingly produced in the sense of like, there were a ton of harmonies that you really had to kind of listen for, but if they wouldn't have been there, it would have sounded really, really thin. Let me show you what this chorus sounds like and what we're doing. So we have the lead vocal, and then we have that low artificial harmony that we showed earlier. And then I sang the lead melody two more times. So we have a left and a right. So we've got that lead melody center, left and right all panned out. And then we have the lead melody sang an octave lower twice panned out left and right. And then we have a harmony that I sang twice panned out left and right. And so all together, here's what all of the vocals in the chorus sound like. I'm lost, I can't find my way back. My compass leads to the wrong track. Let me show you what that sounds like in solo. I'm lost, I can't find my way back. My compass leads to the wrong track. I tried my best, but nothing matters. Pieces shattered and I'm cracked. I br Super tight, nothing too, too crazy going on. We've covered vocal stacking quite a bit. And uh, that is pretty much the entire song. The only other thing that I didn't show was, I think I just dragged that guitar lead for an intro. That's just filtering up with the guitar rig preset. And then that pretty much does it. Let me show you this full thing so we can hear it all together. And then I think we'll wrap up. Here is the full song. Over words, I keep trying to sneak past you. Yeah, yeah. It's always getting worse to get to me like a tattoo. Yeah, yeah. I'm sick of every day, it's like I live in fucking misery. I'm sick of all the pain, it never ends, it's fucking killing me. I drink another fifth and then pass out every month. Take another hit, I wanna drown at my passion.
there you have it. That's how you make a pop punk inspired Black Bear record similar to his new album In Loving Memory. Some of the references for this one were like Fuck You, I Love You, Painkiller, Dead Inside, some of those more upbeat kind of traditional pop punk records. But if you haven't listened to his album, definitely go check it out. And once again, if you like this video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what you want to see in the future in the comments down below. And if you want to support the channel, you can head over to Make Pop Music and check out all of the cool stuff we have over there. Preset packs, sample packs, courses, podcasts, blog posts, all kinds of really, really cool stuff. But that's going to do it for this week's tutorial. I hope you like this one. Let us know what you want to see next time. But until then, much love. Peace.